Villa 1, Saints 3. Just what went wrong? If that doesn't send alarm bells ringing, I don't know what does. You look on paper, everyone knew how big this game was and we've come here today we just haven't turned up like you look at Southampton's two centre backs they have been poor for the majority of the season and we haven't given them a, we haven't given them we've made it look so easy for them it was ba- that bad how good we made them look today they were playing and credit to them they played such nice football on the deck keeping it on the deck and it, it's really scary how reliant we are on Greenish now without McGinn and that let's be honest that looked nasty he's going to be out for a while I think it's just the same tactics all over again, or over and over again. The same tactics. That's what's cost us now. Teams have adapted to uh, Dean Smith's tactics. Four-three-three is not working. We need to switch it. We need to put two up front. People are saying behind me to start playing three at the back, but we can't defend. So three at the back that might make it worse. Oh, we we tried our best, but it wasn't our best performance. We haven't been good. The the three the three or four games it's like the 50th minute they keep on scoring we need like this sort of like like um, a good forward what can help us and and he's very quick and it helps he goes back help helps back and helps the defense well it was dreadful if it it was be straight up about it i mean we've you know we've 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 papered we tried to paper the cracks over the last seven eight games with the run of fixtures that we've had Teams around us have picked up points themselves playing the similar teams, but we were screaming for a change up. You know, half time at Sheffield United, nothing happened. Again, exactly the same today. You know, we were 2 0 down after half an hour against a, you know, a Southampton team that have, have, have been out of form, and we offered nothing. You know, that was one of the worst 45, particularly the first half I've seen in a long time. We had no minks, no, no John McGinn. What are we supposed to do? John McGinn's our main player. He goes up, he goes down, he goes in the middle. He's just literally everywhere. Why did you? Why do you have to play horse instead of Conta? He played the last five games and he's a really good defender. Really shot wide, just doesn't work. Uh, basically up top alone again. We all know this from last month and Dean Smith, for some reason, doesn't understand it as well. Um, I think it was a big blow losing McGinn in the first five minutes, don't get me wrong. But we keep, it's the same story every week. We keep saying the same thing. You know, I watch fan cams at home and fans keep saying the same thing. Greenish out wide doesn't work. And why doesn't D Smith see that? I don't know. I, didn't, I think a lot of people have said it already, but a 4 4 2 with Codger and uh, Wesley up front might make a bit of difference. A lot of people have already said as well, like you've got nothing to lose now. You might as well at least give it a go. Uh, Towards the end of the match, obviously, Codger comes on, two up front. They looked a bit livelier, but obviously they're chasing the game by that point. It's, it's you know, it's gone. But yeah, I thought the first half was absolutely dreadful. Like one of the worst things I've ever seen. I've been following Villa like since I was a kid, um, but that was absolutely dreadful. And I, I came here from Bradford today, and being a Villa fan in Bradford is not easy. <laughs> obviously, after the uh, FA Cup. When we brought on Trent's game, we had Codger and uh, Wesley up front. Everyone's been saying to do that. I, th- I thought that worked really well. Every time we launched on the ball, you know, you got Codger and Wesley. It's, it's working well because both of them have to hold it up for someone else to get there when there's a lone striker. When you see them both together, you know, you can just pass, can, like, Codger can pass it to Wesley, Wesley can back to Codger, and we've got a goal scoring opportunity. So we're just, just waiting and then losing the ball straight away. Wesley was all right, but when he had a chance and he missed it, I thought we should. He thought he should have scored it. Well, right at the start, I just don't. In that first half, it, it was a disgrace. We just didn't turn up. We just weren't in it. I mean, McGinn going off did not help us. I mean, Mings went off early against Leicester. We gone to lose four-one. McGinn went off early today. We, we lose three-one because without him. We just haven't got like, any intensity in the midfield. I mean, Nakama came on, did well, fair play to him. He was all right, don't get me wrong. But he just hasn't got the same intensity, the same drive that McGinn has. A lot of people talk about Jack. Um, he was our best player today. But throughout the season, I'd honestly say McGinn, with his intensity, with his drive, his running, we just didn't have any of that. I think you've got to look at the squad and you think, really, is it strong enough? You know, we, I feel like we, we lack an experience. There's a lot of players who haven't really played in the top flight. You know, there's a lot of players, you know, who grew up from the championship or, you know, even the lads that we've got from Bruges. It's not really, you know, it's a bit of a farmer's league compared to the Prem. You, you've got to be honest. And, and, and I, I believe they are, you know, uh, quality players, but they need that time and experience to gain that kind of Prem quality. I'm very disappointed, as you said. Um, we should win that all day, walk in the park, but 
we played dreadful all day and we're talking about part of the pride but I didn't see any today I uh, didn't see any and Dean Smith I think I think he needs to change it a bit early like when we're, when we're maybe 2 nil down like change things not when we're 3 nil down and we've only got a few minutes to go just bring on Codger and hope for the best we need to definitely two up front because because if you don't Wesley just looks lost he doesn't know where the ball is he goes up for headers he misses them he's got no and when he does get them there's no one no one behind him or to the side of him or in front of him to receive a ball unfortunately so I, de I definitely think two up front will will definitely start working if we give it time to gel definitely I mean I'm come from a bit of an old school background with formations you know, for me Wesley cannot play up top on his own but that's not just Wesley. If you look at some of the strikers we've had before, you know, Hogan being up top on his own didn't work. Um, four, just, just go flat 4-4-2. Four, four, you know, just, just keep, it, keep it simple. The problem is with Smith, and this is, for me, something that he's, he's getting away with it because of what we did last season. Um, but he's not immune to criticism. And he's, he's got to, you know, take the shackles off a little bit, try something different, and let's see how we get on. Put Grealish just behind the strikers. Let's give it a go. What have we got to lose now? Because that's four losses in a row, isn't it? Yeah. So, what have we got to lose? It's a massive games, especially around Christmas period. But, yeah, we're now in relegation now. Relegation zone, aren't we? Yeah, Southampton. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I'm lost for words, really, because we keep saying the same thing every week. So. Today was just like, none of them look... It was just such a weird vibe. Like, no one... Every time he passed it, it seemed to go long and no one, the ball wasn't sticking to feet and it was going everywhere. And every time, you know, the lumping balls up to where's nobody was winning duels. And it was like, what is this? Like, come on, somebody. Like, and you, I could see it a mile off with like the, the overlapping runs and stuff. And it was like getting sucked into the ball. And it was like, just look at Redmond. He's running. And then obviously, just like again and again and again, that's all that happened. And it was just it was so frustrating. What you said, really, I think Grealish needs to play in midfield. I, d I can't see him as a white ring or a left ring. He needs to play in the midfield because that's where, pretty much, that's where he began at Villa midfield, and he's just been dominant. So I think we need to play a four-four-two, um, and maybe that will work. But we got to win against Norwich, or else we're in big trouble. I mean, as it says on the whole end, we are the twelfth man. We are the obsession. We are the fuel of this club. I mean. Is Liverpool, I look at that, I reckon that's the last time we played fully well in the game. The whole end, right behind the team for the whole game. And it got to a point where we gave, had so much energy in the whole end. Even the likes of Wesley, people, I mean, some people think he's lazy. Even him, he was chasing down that day. And we were very unlucky to lose. Since then, I mean, maybe Man United the way we played quite well, fair enough. But other than that, I don't think we've played that well. That's true as well. But I don't think we were as good against Newcastle when we won as we were against Liverpool when we lost. Honestly, I think we were better when we lost against Liverpool in terms of our energy and our fight and our passion. I think it was more Newcastle being poor that day than us being good. We, we need a top quality striker. I, you know, I, I've, I've slagged off Wesley in the past. I believe he, he will come good. He's, he's that type of player. You can see on the ball, he, he, he is good on the ball. It's just, he's lacking experience. He's just not quite there yet. And at this stage in the season, it doesn't matter whether it, you know he's 25 million or whatever. We need a striker that's scoring goals. Whether it's Joe Bloggs down the road, or, you know, or Ronaldo, you need a goal scorer. And at the moment, no one's scoring goals. I didn't expect us to lose today, so I expected the start of this run of four games to be with three points, and we kick on and push from there. From what I've seen today, I'm a little bit nervous now about Boxing Day. Um, you know, Norwich are going to come here with nothing to lose. They're going to want to put a few um, wrongs right after we, you know. We trashed them at their place 5-1. So I'm, I'm a bit concerned because the teams play high press against us and they rob the ball off us and we get sloppy as a result. You know, and, 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 and that for me is the, the, the overriding factor is that the, the system that we're playing, Smith is sort of being found out, but there's no plan B. And it goes back to the days at, you know, at Bruce. You know, we, 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 we ripped the guy apart for not having a plan B. Smith doesn't seem to have one. But he's, he's getting away with it at the minute. And he's, 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 Smith's got to be asked some questions here. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not saying Smith out, not, not by a long shot. But he's got to be held accountable for, for the performance today. It, was, it wasn't good. Well, Norwich and Watford, speaking of a Villa fan, if we said we're going to lose against both of them, they'd laugh. But it is possible because we should have won against Southampton, but we didn't. And we played dreadful. So I'm going to say for Norwich, 2-1 and Watford, 1-0.
I still keep the faith that we'll stay like 17th or we'll just stay up. Uh, Norwich and Watford, obviously, Watford, new manager bounce. They seem like they've kind of turned a corner-ish. They played pretty well against Liverpool, but got beat. Norwich seem like still quite hungry, quite difficult still, even though they're kind of down there. Obviously, it's just maybe a quality issue and they've had a lot of injuries and stuff. But my only worry is that if they keep on and keep on and keep on, you know, they'll pick up wins here and there and we'll just keep losing here and there. And then they'll just overtake us. And before you know it, you know, it's a bit of a role, uh, role reversal and we're kind of where they are and they're, you know, going to be climbing. So I couldn't tell you what the next two are going to be, I'm afraid. I couldn't tell you, but obviously fingers crossed for a win on both. But yeah, it's squeaky bum time, I guess. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.